Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is my week two pre-op liquid diet. My name is Whitney. If you're new here, welcome. Uh, if you have watched my videos before, welcome back. So for those of you that don't know, I am 30 years old. Um, on my video last week, I said I was 31. I don't know why I did that. I am 30. Um, so I'm 30 years old and on Tuesday, October 27th, 2020, I will be having the vertical sleeve gastrectomy surgery, which is a type of weight loss surgery. Um, and I'm very excited. So I have been on my two week pre-op liquid diet. Um, I'm rounding it out right now. And I'm filming this on Saturday, October 24th. Um, so that leaves today and Sunday, which is tomorrow as the last two full days of this. And then Monday I'll be on clear liquids only. And then Tuesday is surgery day. So I wanted to come in, um, check in with you guys. Let's do stats. So um, I started this journey when I decided that I had to do something about my weight at a high weight of 282.4 pounds. I came at you last week with a weight of 267.2 pounds. And today I come at you at 262.8 pounds. Um, so that is a weekly loss of 4.4 pounds and a total loss since my high weight of 19.6 pounds. Um, and forgive me if I'm looking down, I'm just looking at my notes. So I feel pretty good about that, um, but I'm really ready to have surgery. So uh, yeah, that's the week, you know, 4.4 pounds, nothing to sneeze at. So how has this week gone? So when I did my video last week, I told you guys that, you know, this diet wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. And in some ways I still think that's true, but I will say that week two was so much harder. <laughs> it was so much harder than I thought it was gonna be. Um, everything I've read is that like the first couple of days, the first week is the hardest and then you kind of get used to it. And um, it's not so bad after that. That has not been my experience. I found week two to be much harder than week one. And like there were some weird psychological sorry my face itches some weird like psychological things happening because i found myself like i'd drink my shakes do my broth all of that and then i would be laying in bed just like thinking about food and interestingly not even necessarily foods that are like trigger foods for me and like i started having dreams about food that was the weirdest like i had a dream about ice cream and i'm not like ice cream isn't a food I eat very much of. I definitely have a sweet tooth, but it's usually for like baked goods, not for ice cream. Um, I had a dream about lasagna. Like, I don't, I don't know what's happening, but midweek two was rough. Uh, sort of rounding out this week has been a little better. Um, a couple of things I found that really, really help. One is I started using some extracts, um, in my shakes. So like the chocolate shakes in particular, I've tried a couple different extracts in those and that has really helped. So I did um, orange extract in one, which I know that's like controversial. Not a lot, not everyone likes fruit and orange or specifically citrus and orange, I do. So put some orange extract in there and that had like a chocolate orange flavor. Um, I also bought some sugar-free, oh my God, sorry, I don't know what's happening. I also bought some sugar-free s'mores syrup, and that's pretty good actually in the vanilla one with some coffee. Um, I think because the s'more flavor is like quite strong, it really kind of covers up the gross vanilla flavor. I showed you guys the shakes last time, so I'm not gonna show you again. Um, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, go back and watch either my What I Eat in a Day or my week one pre-op video. They both talk about how gross the vanilla shakes are that I'm required to use. Um, but so those extracts and syrups, help the other thing i thought of this week that was just like is i love pho um if you don't know what pho is it's a vietnamese soup it's kind of like ramen so it has like a really good hearty broth and then it has noodles and you put like vegetables in it and you can get it with different meats and it's just delicious obviously i can't eat most of those things but i can eat the broth and so my absolute favorite pho place um i looked and they have a broth only option where you don't have to get the meat or anything else. So I ordered two extra large containers of that 
and that has been absolutely life-changing. So for dinner, the last three nights, I think, I've had the pho broth, and then um, I'll cook up some miracle noodles, which if you're not familiar, they are a zero calorie noodle. Um, I think the, they're shirataki noodles is the actual type of noodle. They're made out of glucomannan or konjac, um, it's the same thing. And it's basically a type of fiber that doesn't have like really any digestible calories. It's a pure fiber. So these noodles have like three, three grams of carbs, but it's all fiber. So zero nut carbs, zero calories, zero sugar, zero fat, like totally a safe food. Um, so I'll, I'd cook up some of those, put those in the broth, and then still prepare it with like the bean sprouts and lime juice and cilantro and basil that it normally comes with. And um, cause I'm allowed to have vegetables other, other than non, other than starchy vegetables, like no potatoes, but that has been so good because I feel like I'm eating a real meal again. And it's actually a food that I really, really enjoy. So that's been life changing. And I'm pretty sure I'll be eating a lot of pho broth after surgery. So, um, that was the diet this week. You know, I'm almost done. I got two more days. I can do anything for two days. And then surgery's on Tuesday. So I thought I'd go over really quickly the stuff I bought for surgery. Um, I tried actually not to buy too much because I have watched enough videos to see people be like, I bought all this stuff and then I didn't use any of it. So I tried only to buy things either that for sure I will use, um, either immediately post-op or if I don't use them post-op, like they're just kind of good to have around. So, the first thing is, uh, warning, we're gonna do potty talk. I bought some stool softeners because if you have watched any number of VSG videos, you know that, or not just VSG, but anyone with weight loss surgery, you know that we suffer with keeping things regular after surgery. And honestly, even before surgery, it just the high protein diet without a lot of like fiber or vegetables just really does a number on the system. So um, I actually did talk to my doctor. She said she doesn't um, tell people to take those prophylactically. So it's not like something to take just in case, but she did recommend having them on hand um, because so many people do suffer with constipation after surgery. Second thing I bought is some um, gas X, or this is generic CBS brand, gas relief cymethicone, I believe is the actual active ingredient to help with the gas after surgery, probably not immediately post-op, but if I'm still having gas pains when I get home, some of that, or just like general gassiness. Again, another thing many of us weight loss surgery folks deal with. It's not all glamor over here. Uh, and then sort of the last medical thing I bought is this Scaraway um, kit. So this is pretty cool. It comes with a couple sheets of medical grade silicone as well as a rollable silicone. Um, and the sheets of silicone you can cut to size and you can actually wash them and reuse them, I think for up to two weeks. And this is like the best thing to help deal with the scars um, on our incision scars. To be honest, I'm not that worried about incision scars, but if I can minimize them, I would like to. And I saw this product on, um, I believe it was Dr. Dre. She has a great YouTube channel. She's a dermatologist, I think. Um, who talks about all sorts of skin products. I'll link her channel down below. Um, but she's talked about this being really great for scars. I guess you can use it even on old scars. Um, but of course, if you can treat them sooner rather than later, that's better. I talked to my surgeon about it. She said I can start using that as soon as the Steri strips come off my incision. So I wanted to have that ready. Um, and then the other thing I got are my prescriptions um, that my doctor called in for me. So I guess not the scar away wasn't the last medical thing, but kind of the last thing I purchased like over the counter. Um, so my doctor prescribed three different medications for post-surgery. Um, the first one is um, a hydrocodone. So this is for pain. So she gave me, it's actually a hydrocodone acetamidophen, which is Tylenol um, mixture. She gave me 10 of these. She said most of her patients don't even need that many. Um, they don't have that much pain that they can manage with Tylenol alone, but she gives you a ton of them just in case you are suffering with pain. Um, I can also cut those in half and take just half of them. So we'll play it by ear. I'm hoping I won't need to use many of them, um, but I'm glad to have them just in case. 
The next thing she gave me is a um, nausea medication that I can't remember the name of, and it has a super duper long chemical name that I don't know how to pronounce, but this is for, um, this is for nausea just to take as needed if I'm feeling nauseous when I'm discharged from the hospital. So we'll see. And then the last one is the proton pump inhibitor. So this is for acid reflux. And this is the only one of the three that I'm actually required to take. Um, she gave me a 30 day course. It's pantoprazole, pantoprazole, I don't know how to say it. Um, but it's a proton pump inhibitor. It helps with the, the acid in your stomach. She gave me a 30 day course of that and said, take it for the first 30 days. I'm sorry guys, I don't know why my face is so itchy today. Um, take it for 30 days and then see how I'm feeling. And if I'm still having acid reflux or heartburn symptoms after that, to call her and she will refill it. So that's kind of the uh, medical stuff that I bought. I also bought a couple of other random things. So I got this package, it's actually a three pack, if you, I don't know if you can see that, um, of these antibacterial hand wipes that are French lilac scented. I found these at Marshall's. I'm thinking I'm just gonna take one of these little packs. Each one has, I don't know many, how many wipes, 20 wipes. Um, take one of those to the hospital with me just to have to like wipe off my hands and stuff like that. COVID times being what they are. Um, and I'm, I'm weird about my hands. I like them to be clean and I don't really love using hand sanitizer over dirty hands because I just feel like I get a film on my hand and it's not good. So I thought those might be nice. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'll have a sink in my room and I can get up and wash my hands, but especially if I'm not feeling up to it or whatever, those will do in a pinch. Um, the other thing I bought, I forgot to lay out here, but I think I have it on my desk. Yes. Um, I bought these KN95 masks. Um, so for those of you that don't know, KN95 is basically um, an N95 mask that are made to China's standard for N95. They don't meet the US NIOSH approved standards to be called an N95, but they are what they use in China. Um, obviously it's very difficult to get actual N95 masks right now. They're being reserved for healthcare workers, rightfully so. Um, but I was able to get these from all places. Um, Chalk Zero, which is a food company, that sells all sorts of delicious, low calorie, low carb, like keto friendly type syrups and chocolates and things like that. Um, and I looked on their website cause I was ordering some of their maple syrup and um, they had those on there randomly. And I guess at the beginning of COVID, they were able to buy some and they are just selling them at cost. And I thought those would be good to have to take to the hospital. Um, I actually had a few more of those that I've used when I've had to go to um, the hospital for other like medical procedures. Um, normally day to day, I just wear cloth masks that I've made, but if I'm going to the hospital, I kind of want like a higher level of protection, both for myself and the people around me. So um, I'm going to take those. I don't know how much I'll wear them, to be honest, um, especially post-op, but I'll have them. They don't take up a lot of space, so we'll see. And then I also bought a tub shroom. Um, so as any of you that have watched any number of weight loss surgery videos know, we often end up with hair loss after surgery. Um, to be honest, it's not something I'm super concerned about. I'm sure I will have the hair loss, but I have a ton of hair. I don't know if you guys can see this, like just a lot of hair. Um, and so I'm not too worried about losing hair but I don't wanna to have to clean out the drain, like stick my fingers down there all the time. So I thought the tub shroom would come in clutch for that. And then the final thing is actually not something I bought. It's something the hospital gave me, my little pre-op surgery kit. Um, and this is my shower kit. So there's a couple of things in here. We'll kind of do a very uh, unexciting unboxing here. So the first thing that's in here is this little book it, booklet. And um, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but it's basically just like a little booklet of information about what to bring, what not to bring, how to avoid infection, things like that. Pretty basic stuff. 
Um, and then this I thought was a little extreme. So as most of you probably know, if you've watched other people's videos, you have to shower with this special antibacterial soap the night before in the morning of your surgery. Um, my hospital kind of takes it to the next level. And instead of just giving instructions, they also gave me this um, shower card that gives you detailed instructions on how to shower, um, including this little uh, suction cup kit and this thing's laminated so you can hang this in your shower in case you've forgotten how to shower um and they also gave you gave me a little timer i guess this is two minutes because you have to put the stuff on your body wait two minutes then reapply and then rinse it off so you can take all of this into the shower in case you can't um, remember the instructions. And then there are two of these in the kit, um, which is a bottle of the chlorhexidine, I think that's how you say it, the special solution um, that you're supposed to wash with. Um, so I guess this is the same stuff that Hibiclens, which I've seen a lot of you use. Um, it's the same thing, but just generic, I guess. And I guess it's been shown not only to like kill bacteria and viruses that are on your skin, but it actually has a lasting effect to continue killing viruses or, um, or bacteria that come into contact with your skin for a certain period of time after you wash with it. So that's why it's so important to use this pre-op. Um, and they also included in here, there's like a shower mitt that I guess is supposed to help with um, spreading it around your body, which I think will be good because a lot of people I've seen said the gel like doesn't, it doesn't foam up, so it's not super easy to wash with. So I think the uh, the shower mitt will help with that. Um, and that's it, that's all that's in there. That's really all I've bought other than just some food stuff for the stage two diet when I came out, which will be full liquids, um, which blessedly can include something other than protein shakes. So um, today or tomorrow probably, I'm gonna be making some homemade split pea soup because I'm allowed to have split pea soup. And I just, I don't love canned soups, but I love homemade soups. So I got all the stuff to do that. So I'm gonna do that this weekend. Um, oh, I didn't mention, I had to do a, a COVID test yesterday and they told me that once I went in and did that swab that I had to self isolate until surgery, which makes sense. So I'm basically stuck at home and I have nothing else to do. So I just have a whole list of kind of surgery prep things to do, everything ranging from cooking food, like the soup. I'm also gonna make a bunch of sugar-free jello and put it in those little Dixie cups which is the other thing I forgot to show you. I did buy a package of those little like two ounce Dixie cups. So I'm gonna cook, do uh, do the Jello, but then I'm also going to do just things like fill up my pet food bins since I'm not, I don't think I'm supposed to be lifting much after surgery, kind of get the house clean, things like that. So that's what I have in store for this weekend. Um, I probably will do another video day before surgery where I talk about my uh, goals. So keep an eye out for that. I probably won't post it until after surgery, but I will film it before. So um, if any of you have weight loss uh, channels that I'm not already following you, let me know down in the comments. I'd really love to follow all of you. I already follow a lot of people, but um, I'm always down for more. And if you would uh, give this video a like, it really helps my videos get shown more on YouTube. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you enjoy the content. And then the last thing I had is I was thinking about doing a video that kind of goes over insurance, um, not so much the insurance requirements specifically to be approved for bariatric surgery, though I can do that too, but I feel like there's already a lot of that out here. Um, but more about like understanding insurance, how to find out if you're covered, what to look for in your policy, dealing with claims denials, things like that. Um, I've had to deal with a lot of crap from my insurance company during this process, which has not been that upsetting for me, but I know it could be distressing to a lot of people if you're not used to dealing with that sort of thing. So I've learned a lot about insurance through the process. I'm not an expert, um, but I'd be happy to put that together, um, but it would be kind of a lot of work. So if no one's interested, I'm not gonna do it. But if you would be interested in something like that, comment down below and let me know. Um, and that's something I'm happy to do. So thanks for watching guys and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.